Right, back on video. I've taken some pictures with the flash in there. I don't know if it come out on the video. There's lots of people's writings, signatures and stuff on the walls. I've walked round and I've taken lots of pictures of the initials of people going back in 18th century. Because um, I think it was built round about that time. It was like one of those Victorian things that they used to build follies. See? I'll just walk round with the video. It has been done before when I first came. You always spot something slightly different when you come a second time, don't you? But uh, like I say, there is stairs. I've got pictures I've took before with the camera inside. I put my hand in before. Right then, there's the tower. I'm just going to put the camera over here while I stop and have a drink of water. I do this sometimes. Do you know Anyway, here we are then. We're at the Folly over at Banwell Wood. Managed to get in. Seen some other people. Covering a track that way. Right, let's go and get the, get the food out. Food. Orange. Banana, oh, crisps, Kit Kat, got other stuff, cheese and onions, go with the crisps, a little later, that, water, water, Remind me in, in the future, I better look back and remember this day when I came out on the 22nd of April 2021, the day after the Queen's 95th birthday, and uh, she had a very quiet birthday because of Covid. And, She's mourning in mourning because the Duke of Edinburgh died on the night. So uh, nice and peaceful. I've only just take my coat off. Two cameras, one for photos, one for video. The wings of David Bowie. Okay, that's that'll do. Over and out for a minute. <laughs> well, actually, you can leave it rolling a minute because I'm gonna put my coat away oh. and eat my banana on the move because somebody else might come along in a minute. <laughs> somebody else might come along. So, let's put it water first. It's 
It's a lovely day, everyone. It's just a lovely day. La, 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 la. It's just a lovely day. Right then, camera. We haven't got a spare memory card, don't forget, Sheila. You can put it in the camera recorder. So I'm going to have to turn off in a minute. You can bet your life I'll need that memory card. You can bet your life. Right, bye, Folly. I will be seeing you from the distance a lot on my walks this summer. And I will be coming back up because I want to see all the wild garlic appear. I'm just going to re do the reverse walk where I came because though I was going to go down on the lower track I've not actually walked in this direction on this track and basically what it is you get a completely different perspective when you do it in reverse don't you? Obviously you do It's like seeing the back and the front of somebody I remember before when I first found this place I came as far as here and I wandered over there and I, I fast where I found all those nets and cages, like a big cage. And I thought, my God, what do they keep in here? I can still see that cage from here, but it's all paths disappearing. Now there was like a path here, but they've thrown that there, let put people off. There's cages there, but they, they have um, special birds up here breeding. I don't know what sort. But uh, let's just have another look at the tower before we go. <sighs> no doubt the people who sort of have rent this place or own it or whatever, they, they might have seen my videos on YouTube and thought, God, we can't encourage everyone up there. She's not doing any harm, but you know, we're not really open to the public. <laughs> But to me, I think this should be available to people. Same with um, the Hillfort area. I, I, I really believe it should be made available. It's wrong for all these rich people to, to have everything and not allow ordinary people the pleasure of their own inheritance. I mean, don't forget, I've traced my family back to royalty. You know, William the Conqueror and beyond all the kings of England and Queens yeah I have and it's true I got back what it was I was tracing my family back and back and back doing all the footwork all the record work all the archives searching digging over 20 to 30 years and as soon as you find your gatekeeper it opens up a new window as soon as you find anyone of significance in your tree, you're there. I didn't know it was going to lead me back to William the Conqueror. But it did, and it's been well researched by other people as well. It's when a Stuckville married an Isaacson. It was when a Mason married an Isaacson. When a Mason married a Brooks. That is my connection. And from those relationships of wealthy landowners up in Cambridgeshire and Suffolk, I was able to go back. Because these people, once you find someone of significance, they are well recorded. For land power reasons, people are recorded. What they own, what they got, who they are, their wills. And England were very, very good at recording stuff for power and control reasons, for wills, inheritance. So you don't really have to go back too far as soon as you find one of these people, because everything about them will be recorded. I've got people who are constables of the tower, the Stutvilles, William Stutville. 
uh, well, loads of them actually, the Robert Stupfills, the Isaacsons, but the Stupfills, through the Stupfills, I was able to go back, not always directly to Stupfill to Stupfill, through women, who they married, were often wealthy, come from wealthy families. So they're they've they're all recorded. They, they, you know, people used to marry their daughters off to wealthy blokes, or vice versa. So once you go back to at least 1700, 1600, and if if by then you have found somebody, the gate is open, the windows are open. So when people say, oh, that can't be true, because what happens when you go back so far, other people have already, and I'm talking about proper people, proper ge genealogists and researchers, have, and the Queen's own historians and, and ge genealogists, and it's known for <laughs> decades and years and centuries who the families were, then... You, the work's almost been done for you. The hard bit is getting back from where you are now. Sometimes go back to your grandparents. A lot of people don't even know who their grand, great grandparents are. I've, I've learned a load. Because most of my grandparents died when I was a young person or before I was born. Um, I have got one grand who lived to nearly 101. She lived, she died in 1975. She was born in 1874. So there was uh, information then going back quite a long way. And you can go th laterally through your tree and find people as well. You don't always have to think you've got to go up. You can go sideways and then up. You know, there's, it's like a maze, family tree is. It's very exciting and it's very absorbing and I'm very passionate about it. And I've done lots of work on it and I share a lot. And I'm, I never stop doing it. And what I'm doing now with these videos, I call it my living tree. Because how I would love to have been able to hear my ancestors' voices, heard their thoughts and feelings. You know? So I share myself to different clouds and links to the tree, things like that. Because I go visiting castles, churches, graveyards, towns, cities, villages, all over UK, from Scotland to Cornwall, to Wales, to Kent, everywhere, Yorkshire, Lancashire. Yeah, you name it, and I've been there nearly. Iona, Lindisfarne. And the further you get into it, the more information there is. It opens up a treasure trove of ancestral jewels. Over and out for now, folks. We're nearly at the end of the track. This is what I do when I'm on my walks. It's probably boring to most people, and I probably repeat myself. But I reflect. It helps me my memory actually as well because I've, I've had to obtain so much absorb so much s records and knowledge I can't actually my computer has to store most of it now I can't just recall a date or exact birth I have to go back because it's so in the beginning I could when I went back just a couple of generations I could remember everything but over 20 or 30 years when you've got a 30,000 tree which isn't, is quite big, but there's people with much bigger trees. There's an awful lot of stuff to remember. Because it's, there's documents, there's certificates, um, and all that, you know, records. You can't possibly remember it all, like in someone's will, for example. Um, and, and that's another thing, trying to... I've been trying to learn and read medieval wills. So it's all very exciting, everybody. And this is the living tree, me out here talking about it as well. Uh, it's another way of, if my kids listen, of them internalizing 
what they what a rich family history they've got um, some of them will probably drive them mad it's like people who do a lot of knitting or something or play golf or cricket and they go on and on about it I expect that's what it can be sometimes so when I'm in the company of others I do tend to sometimes not say a great deal unless they ask me or if I find something new I'll just say oh I found this out I mean I used to get over enthusiastic with people but now I know you can pick up Oh, God, here she goes again. She's going to talk about the tree. So, hi, trees. Hi, everybody. I've had a lovely walk. I've really enjoyed coming. And I want to come back to see the white garlic. <clears throat> so, anyway, folks. If you're asleep now, these are good for people with insomnia in my videos as well. And I share them on YouTube and they go all over the world. I'm probably out of space by now. <sighs> Anyway, over and out. We're back where we started about half an hour, hour ago. Lovely views that through there we got Crook's Peak. Beautiful view that, isn't it? And over there, look, look at that view there of um, Brent Knoll. Beautiful, isn't it? I'm going to, what I'm doing now, I'm going to go to, to some people in the field over there with a dog. I'm going to go under there around this field, down where they are, and then along a track, past that house, in front of that house, and back towards the plantation in Hutton. I've got a really big walk planned. Okay, over and out.